Good morning. Welcome to our time of worship together this morning. Uh, a couple of announcements that I'd like to uh, highlight before we begin worship this morning. Uh, we, we are, um, if you've been watching the announcements, we're going to have an incredibly busy week in the parish. Um, April 22nd, so tomorrow, is the food grain breakfast. Do you want to talk about that, John? Well, okay, sure, yeah. Uh, we're going to have a breakfast here down in the basement at 9 a.m. starting. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a, a speaker, Rick Locke, who is our, our uh, director for the, for the province. And there's Wendy Paulson. She has just returned from a trip <coughs> over to uh, Africa and seen what's, what's going on there. And uh, will fill us in on, on all the stuff that's happening where she was. Uh, and yeah, then questions and more information on, on how, what we do and, and uh, how the money gets transferred over to there. So everybody's welcome. Come on down and uh, yeah, we have a little bit of a surprise type of breakfast. <laughs> and if you haven't been before, I encourage you to go. It is an incredible experience and uh, quite profound at how this community is uh, just amazing work that's going on uh, on behalf of this community. So join them, join them tomorrow. Uh, then on uh, April uh, 25th, Thursday, uh, is the Rogation Service uh, Shared Ministry. Do you want to say anything about that, Brenda? Sure. Is that the hoops? Yes, this year John and Rhonda have offered their farm. Uh, in the past, they've had to bring their farm equipment into town, so this, this year uh, it was easier for us to go to their place so they don't have to haul their equipment around. Rogation service is basically a service to bless the seed, the water, and the land for, for the coming growing season. So that's what rogation is. And all the churches are involved, they all have a part in it, and then there's a, a lunch after. Great, thank you. Um, then if you haven't if you haven't had enough to eat by Thursday, um, next Saturday is our parish breakfast. And if you do want to eat, you better let Carol and Linda know because I, I'm here to tell that she has not had many contacts yet. So if you want to make sure and eat when you come, uh, please let Linda Lanigan and Carol Schultz know. Uh, and our guest speaker this month is Orva Kellum. So we're, we're looking forward to uh, that. Then also on April 28th, we're uh, inviting the community to really help us get the word out. Uh, April 28th, next Sunday at 2 o'clock, we'll be having the funeral service for Chris Ayler here. Uh, so 2 o'clock next Sunday, uh, funeral service for Chris Ayler. I believe those are all the announcements that I, I want to make this morning. Are there any others that you may have? Orba? Just the one, as everybody's noticed on the board. Next, on the 28th, there won't be no coffee after church because we're going to be getting together to get ready for the funeral, just so that everybody right. gets up on the board for just a reminder. Thanks. So you, you have to get fed and watered before next Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> or wait till after the funeral. Or, or wait till after the funeral. All right. All right. Good. Uh, this morning we come together to celebrate the uh, fourth Sunday of Easter. The Easter season, which is marked by the color white, as a sign of the hope that we all share in our risen Lord and Savior. Uh, we worship this morning using Holy Communion setting five from our Blue with One Voice book. And I invite us to prepare our hearts for worship as we begin with the brief order for confession and forgiveness that you will find on page 10. I invite those who are able to please rise. We begin our worship as we would begin every day of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The writer of 1 John reminds us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The good news that we come to hear and share with one another this day is that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, <coughs> I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn for this morning is out of our Cranberry Colored Worship Book, uh, number 778, The Lord's My Shepherd. Our service continues on page 28 at the front of our hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also
Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be made whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lessons. Good morning. morning. Our first lesson comes from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. Peter and John had been arrested the previous day because they were proclaiming the news of the resurrection to the people. In today's reading, Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit so that he can proclaim salvation in Jesus' name to the religious authorities. Here begins the reading. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had <clears throat> made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, well, let it be known that you, that all of you, and to all the people of Israel, that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom you raised from the dead, who God raised from the dead, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, and has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 23, and if the congregation would read the second line in each verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lay down in green pastures and leads me himself the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle lesson comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. Jesus' death on our behalf is the clearest demonstration of divine love. It, this is the very love we share with others, not just through our words, but especially through our deeds. In sharing such love, we fulfill God's commandments. The writer of 1 John speaks God's words and says this, We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has worldly good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts He knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, 
that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, love one another just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There ends our readings. I invite those who are able to rise for our gospel acclamation. <coughs> According to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. In language that recalls the 23rd Psalm, Jesus describes himself as the shepherd who cares for his sheep. He is willing to die for them, and he is over able to overcome death for them. St. John speaks God's word and says this I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I received this command from my Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> Grace to you and peace from God and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O most holy shepherd, you lead and care for all your sheep. When we stray, you guide us back to right paths. When we wander, you call our name and lure us home. O oh God, we give you thanks for times when we have known your care. When we have been sustained in times of want when we have been comforted in times of fear, when we have seen your gift of love, for this we give you thanks. Equip us to offer your shelter, your protection, your care to those in need, to be shepherds to those who depend on us. These things we pray in the name of Christ, our shepherd and guide. Amen. Just before I begin, I'd like to again draw your attention to the picture on the screen. Kind of looks like a, a bit of an innocuous picture. But this was taken when Jan and I were on the coastal walk in Cornwall in England. And uh, I took this picture about 10 steps after I took the previous picture. The previous picture these sheep were scattered in that entire paddock, all grazing. And it was only Jan and I and, and uh, brother-in-law Pete on this walk, and we saw nobody else for miles. And all of a sudden, these sheep 
lifted up their heads and started walking in that file. And I walked about another 20 steps to take the picture that follows this one. And they were running in single file down to that corner. My view of the Good Shepherd radically changed that day because we saw no one until all the sheep were through the gate and the shepherd appeared and closed the gate. It was time to change paddocks. The sheep hear my voice and know it. History will show that the 20th century was a time when churches talked together about their differences and similarities. There have been mergers and comb combinations, new opportunities for various Christian communities to worship and serve together, and new understandings of how each group lives out God's life given in Christ. <laughs> I suspect this is no big news for us who are in the midst of finding our way of living out a new relationship in this parish. Yet, many people still long for the old way of being church. Many people think that as long as I can come to church on Sunday and hear my own pastor preach, and that I can sit in my favorite pew, what is there to change? Yet, many may not know that discussions between the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada and the Anglican Church of Canada have been ongoing since 1983. We have looked at ways in which we can live together in the same community, to be able to recognize each other's ministries, to share the Lord's Supper in each other's buildings, while remaining and celebrating our own unique denominations. These discussions brought us to the point of signing an agreement known as the Waterloo Declaration, which says, we have an open communion between our churches and completely recognize each other's ministries. In recent years, the conversations have continued among various other Christian denominations. In various ways, these con conversations have been an attempt at a way of beginning to recognize and appreciate those places where we are the same instead of holding up our differences and keeping ourselves separated from each other. Every year on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we hear the gospel read from John's gospel in chapter 10. This wonderful chapter reminds us of the life and care for that life that we have in Jesus, known as the Good Shepherd. This section of John chapter 10 raises questions, though, about just who the sheep are. A question that has been asked by Christians from the beginning of the church. With such a gospel that proclaims God's love for all the earth, it is understandably human to want to know exactly which one of us belongs to God's sheepfold. Restrictions have been placed and rules were made. People have claimed power for themselves in ways that excluded others from receiving the sacrament, from being buried in consecrated or holy ground even from being part of their own families if their views were different. We have in our time, through the ecumenical movement, moved away from some of this. But still, 
people want to know who is in and who is out. We do want to be part of the sheepfold. And the boundaries are still set that keep out those who we think should not be included. In North America, uh, the divisions between Christians seem to be not so much denominational as categorical. There are those who are conservative, moderate, or liberal. There's the biblical literist or the historical critical, pro-life or pro-choice, law-bound or grace-centered. Whatever may divide us in our time or in times past, the human tendency toward an exclusive claim on God's life is prevalent. This ends up making us wary of one another and unable to hear what Jesus has to say to us and through us to all the earth about God's salvation. Jesus, the good shepherd, speaks to us quite differently. Jesus says he is the one who calls the sheep. And the sheep know his voice. It's like what happens when a, a parent looking for a child in a crowded place simply calls out the child's name and is heard by the child despite the other noise. Well, most of the time. Jesus' voice is known to the sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Jesus also reminds the Jews of his time, and those of us who are in the church in our time, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Jesus' reference to the gathering of the nations and his saving work is one even we in our time must be reminded of constantly. Our work for God and for God's reign is shared with others who bear Christ's name, and also by others who know Jesus' voice. Jesus' words about who the sheep are come in the context of one overarching, completely powerful image. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This Jesus, who calls out for all who listen to his voice, not only gathers the sheep, but even lays down his life for them. Nowhere, nowhere does Jesus say that he calls the sheep who are the brightest and best. He does not say that he calls the sheep and chooses one or two of them. He does not say that only the weakest of sheep need his help. He does not say that these sheep should be kept in separate little groups unto themselves. He does not make any distinctions among the sheep at all. Jesus simply tells us that all those who hear his voice, he will gather together and lay down his life for them. This is an amazing shepherd 
whose goodness must be that of God. The people for whom Jesus lays down his life are not just the chosen few, those who are sitting in these pews every Sunday morning. His life is laid down for everyone. When we have learned that well, we will be able to live in the fullness of God's life. We have a responsibility as sheep that know the shepherd to let ourselves and others know that the fold has an open door. Jesus is both the shepherd and the door. The one that gives life in every sense. So as we gather ecumenically, as we work in our churches, towns, and world to heal all those things that divide us, as we look not only for unity, but also for the celebration of diversity, we do so knowing that Jesus the Good Shepherd is the gatherer and life giver. All our actions and life are nurtured in the gracious sheepfold of God's life in Christ. This Good Shepherd of ours could not possibly hold all of the sheep in one building on this earth. And nowhere does he say that that is his, is his intention either. Christ only says that there will be one flock and one shepherd. Those who know him and hear his voice will be gathered together. And he will lay down his life for them. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. This is the urgent message that we have to take out into the world with us as we share this gracious and loving spirit of Christ through our actions and hospitable sharing of this awesome message. Amen. Uh, now, uh, Brenda and I are throwing a little curveball at you today. We are going to sing, if you'll notice on the screen, an LBW hymn, number 501. So you're not going to have music for this, but we think you probably know the tune. It's He Leadeth Me. I invite you to rise for the singing.
invite us now to join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated as we uh, continue our worship service with the installation of our new parish council. Just wait, I will call you up. Good order. Uh, the following people have been elected by the congregation to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life and our mutual mission as a congregation. As your names are read, I invite you to come forward. Our chairperson, Peter Berry, uh, Vice Chairperson, Brenda Small, Secretary, Rhonda DeHoop, Treasurer, Bev Decker, and Vicki Cornwell, Corey Nordahl, and Barb Gwillem. Come stand up. I won't bite you. Come stand in line. <laughs> that is much better. <laughs> the shepherd here might know. <laughs> A reading from 1 Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this parish, in the wider church, in this community, and in the whole world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving that the spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this parish. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, 
Will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, I invite you to respond, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. I invite the congregation to please rise, and I invite you to turn and face the congregation. And people of God, I ask you, will you support these, your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. I now invite you to turn and face me. And I now declare you installed as council members of this parish. Almighty God bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news, praying God of grace and responding, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church and ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. God of grace. Yeah. Nurturing God, preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems. Inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace. Yeah. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. And we especially pray for Arnold Ginther, Jim Gorrell, Doris Hansen, Elvina Kelm, Albert Cookshaus, Katie Martin, Gloria Schultz, Sieg Schultz, Janelle Wilson, Edwin Young, and those most dear to us whom we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. We especially pray for our newly installed council members, Peter, Brenda, Rhonda, Bev, Vicki, Corey, and Barb. God of grace, Hear our prayer. into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with one another. God's peace. God's peace, Barb. God's peace, Barb. God's peace, Vicky. God's peace, Brenda. God's peace, Beth. God's peace, Rhonda. God's peace, Gloria. God's peace, Tom. Peace, Marvin. God's peace, Ray. God's peace, Lloyd. Peace, Lloyd. Thank you.
God's peace lady. God's peace, Jerome. God's peace. God's peace, God's peace team. God's peace, Teresa. God's peace. God's peace, Jerome. God's peace, Marina. God's peace, Marina. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace on you. God's peace, Bertha. God's peace, Bertha. God's peace, Gwen. God's peace. Oh, oh. God's peace. God's peace. <laughs> our service continues with our offering. May God bless all of our gifts. Please rise. <clears throat> Together in our offertory prayer, let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our service continues with a great thanksgiving that you'll find on page 36. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God, but chiefly, we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. For he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
mighty and merciful Lord. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, <clears throat> who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people. In the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for all is ready. You may be seated, and as we uh, commune this day, we are, um, have once again uh, reintroduced the common cup, so uh, those who prefer to use the common cup are welcome to do so this day. Let's join together in singing Lamb of God.
together in our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Now I would invite you to lift up your faces and your hearts to receive the benediction of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn for this morning is The Kingdom of Love, My Shepherd Is. We'll be singing uh, verses 1, 2, 5, and 6. Uh, number 502 in the, uh, uh, in the Cranberry Book. Peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <coughs>